Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing part two of my book awards for 2022. Now, as I mentioned in the character awards video that I posted before this one, um, I have a really hard time ranking books. So I really struggled with the idea of ranking one through 10 of the books that I read this year. So I decided that instead of doing that, I'm actually going to do a book awards. I know there's a bunch of booktubers that have been doing the same idea and I absolutely love it. I think it's brilliant for those of us who struggle to rank things. I had some really, really good reads this year, so it was difficult to decide what categories I wanted to do, but ultimately it came down to books that really stood out to me in different respects throughout the year. And again, I will remind everyone this is my subjective opinion. Um, so this is just books that really resonated with me personally as I was reading them throughout the year. Let me know down in the comments as we're going what book from your reading list of 2022 would fit into these categories. If you want to play along, I would love to know what your top uh, awards for 2022 would look like as well. Now before we get into it, I'm going to give you guys a little bit of some stat information about what I, how much I read and all of that kind of stuff in 2022. I ended up reading 66 books in 2022, which is a personal best for me on Goodreads. Uh, the closest I had gotten to that before was 64 books in the year 2020. And then I wrote, read like 22 books in 2021 because I took a major hiatus from reading. Um, but I read 66 books this year and that was, was great. I don't really pay attention to the numbers as much because I just want to read quantity, quality over quantity. Um, but 66 books total felt pretty good. 23,443 pages, which is a ridiculous amount of pages. I can't even make that make sense in my head. My average book length that I read this year was 355 pages, which I was pretty happy with because I did read a bunch of smaller books in between my larger fantasy and, and fiction novels this year. My average rating for the books that I read in 2022 was 3.9, which is two points higher, I think, than it was in 2020. Um, I tend to be not stingy with five star ratings, but to get a five star ratings, books really have to like really resonate with me deep in my soul <laughs> to get five star ratings. Um, I do tend to give out five star ratings for memoirs and things like that because I have a, I feel, feel really weird like giving someone like a three star rating for their life experiences. I just think that's kind of weird. So anyways, um, I think out of the 66 books, I want to say I gave seven or eight five star ratings, I believe this year. Um, and so that's why I always tell people my three and four star ratings are also still really good ratings and especially the four stars. Um, but yeah, I don't know. My rating system may change in the future, but currently that's just where we're at. So the first award that I'm going to be giving for the books that I read in 2022 is the book that had the best atmosphere. This is a book that just the the immersion and the the atmosphere had a really really powerful quality to it that I really enjoyed. And the book that actually surprised me as being one that has stuck with me since earlier on in the year that I'm going to give this award to is A Green and Ancient Light by Frederick S. Durbin. This book is kind of a love child between Narnia and Pan's La the movie Pan's Labyrinth by Guillermo del Toro. Um, it's a lighter kind of Pan's Labyrinth almost. It still has some, you know, slightly darker moments in it, but overall it's just whimsical and beautiful. This book takes place during one of the world wars. I can't remember which one. It's been a long time since I read the book. But a young boy goes to live with his grandma farther away from the front and they end up having to save and hide a fallen pilot from one of the enemy planes. Now, that by itself doesn't really give you a good idea of what this book is about because it is very whimsical. It is a fantasy, so there is a mythical creature involved in this story. But the beautiful part about this was the garden that existed that the boy would go up to and it was full of all these incredible sculptures and it turns into a little bit of a mystery with a puzzle to solve. 
and it's just like I can't stop thinking about this book. It's it's very atmospheric. It's it's very warm and wholesome and has that nostalgia feel but also like threaded with a little bit of mystery and and danger and it's just really really beautiful. The next book on my book awards for 2022 is the best non fantasy fiction book that I read this year. This one was a tough one and I had to choose between some pretty incredible books and honestly the three books that I was choosing from were all five stars <laughs> which was kind of great. The options for this category were Chinggis Birth of an Empire by Khan Igledin which features the uh, early years of Temujin who would eventually become Chinggis Khan. It's a historical fiction, highly recommend, it's amazing. The next one was Snowflower and the Secret Fan by Lisa C, another historical fiction that made me cry. It's a generational story of two young girls in China who go through foot binding together and kind of grow up together into their families and it's a whole generation story incredible book. Lisa C is always amazing. And then the third one that was in this category was The Outsiders by S.E. Hinton. This book takes place with a motley crew of boys who uh, are greasers in like the 1950s, 60s, and it's just such an incredibly beautiful character-driven classic. I love it so much. I've always loved the... Um, the movie and I finally decided to read the book this year. The winner for this category was easily The Outsiders by S.E. Hinton. This book was everything that I wanted it to be after loving the movie and I just love these characters so much. Johnny Cade is one of my favorite non-fantasy characters of all time. I absolutely love him and he stole my heart just as much in the book as he ever did in the movie. The next category for best books that I read in 2022 is best nonfiction that I read this year and this one came down to two books. I really could not decide which of these two books I wanted to feature here. They're so different but they were both really impactful and I loved them both a lot. The first one is While the Locusts Slept by Peter Razor. This is the memoir of a young man who grew up in an orphanage in the early 1900s in Minnesota where I live and the reason that I picked this up is because my uh, great-grandmother and her siblings were also taken to the same orphanage that Peter Razor was in and I have been doing some family history study and so when I saw that this memoir existed I picked it up. Peter Razor was a Native American boy who ended up at this orphanage and went through some pretty incredibly difficult things to say the least and his memoir is profound. Um, I really appreciated his voice and his willingness to share what happened uh, both in the orphanage and when he was with foster parents afterwards. The second book that I'm going to put up uh, as a favorite for this year in the nonfiction category is Let the Hurt Girl Speak by my friend Katie Andrews. This book surprised me, honestly. Uh, Katie has a really wonderful way with words in her nonfiction work, and this is the second of her nonfiction books that I've read. I also read her poetry book, Sondra and Maury. This book is a kind of early 20s coming-of-age essays and poetry collection that just struck so many chords with me, and it was something that felt incredibly nostalgic, honestly, because I felt like she was writing to the person I was in my early 20s and all of the anxieties and stresses and uh, trauma healing that happens or starts oftentimes in our early 20s. Um, and yeah, I just think this is a really beautiful little book. I highly recommend it for anyone who's looking for a nonfiction read. Next up is the book that I can't stop thinking about and this is a book that ever since I read it I literally can't stop thinking about it and wanting to reread it and I'm pretty sure I'm going to end up rereading it sometime in 2023 if I need a old favorite to go back to and that is Never Die by Rob J. Hayes. This is a Motley Crue wuxia Asian inspired fantasy novel where a bunch of uh, warrior heroes are collected and sent on a quest to kill an emperor. This book packs so much goodness into the short space that it takes up and I love A Motley Crew, and this just did not disappoint in any way. Some of my favorite characters of the year are in this book and I absolutely loved it. All right, the next category I'm gonna do in uh, this book awards is best combat scenes. Combat scenes are really tough to judge. Honestly, there were some really amazing ones this year and I 
really had a hard time choosing what my favorite one was. Um, I think it honestly just came down to the uniqueness because I've read so much fantasy and so much historical fiction at this point that when a book stands out to me as having some really like, oh, I remember those combat scenes. Those are really cool for whatever reason that they were immediate nominees for this list. The first nominee for this category was Faithful in the Fallen by John Gwynn. He did some really cool things with shield walls that I thought were brilliant and things that I hadn't really read in uh, fantasy books prior to that. I'm just not saying they're not out there, but I hadn't really read anything to that level and I thought it was really cool what he did with it. The next one was actually Genghis Birth of an Empire by Con Igledon. Again, this was a lot of horse uh, cavalry battles. The Mongolian warlords in this book were brilliant and just the survival fights in this book also were quite fantastic. Um, just this book in general was incredible, so I really enjoyed the combat scenes as well. The third nominee for this category is Wistful Ascending by J.C.M. Byrne, which a lot of people might be kind of surprised to see uh, in this category, but it's a superhero space opera where Rohan, our main protagonist, is running away from a life that he really wishes that he could kind of leave in the past, have something more peaceful to round out the rest of his days, but the past comes knocking. Rohan is a half uh, Ildrak hybrid, which means that he's basically a super soldier. For best combat this year, I'm going to give it to Wistful Ascending by J.C.M. Byrne. This was just so unique. It was so much fun to read. Rohan, I love a super soldier trope when it is done well, and I think uh, Joe Byrne did a phenomenal job with it. I There was a scene about three quarters of the way through the book that left me breathless, and it's an action slash combat scene, but with a very, very heavy emotional impact behind it as well. And honestly, it was just really fun to read. I really loved the combat scenes in this and Rohan going up against like these massive opponents sometimes that it was just, it was just fun. It reminded me a lot of anime and comic book heroes and my favorite like X-Men movies and all that kind of stuff. And I just had a great time with it. All right, the next category that I'm going to give an award for is the best world building of 2022. And this one, there were definitely quite a few books that I would have easily given world building awards to. I think that there are an incredible amount of talented writers on my have read list from 2020. But the one that blew my mind, like the level of world building blew my mind, and I said this already in my December wrap up, but the world building detail rivaled the level of what I found in Malaz and Book of the Fallen as far as just how much information the author is giving us through the story rather than like you're not getting info dumps, but there's so much there. Um, and that was Deathless Beast by Andrew D. Meredith. This book follows uh, some pretty heavy themes of deeply held beliefs. It had uh, just a great assortment of characters in it. And if you love master storyteller vibe, slow burn, kind of almost like easily modern Tolkien-esque level storytelling, this book is for you. It's incredible. The level of detail in this book blew my mind. It's and, and the way he was able to get so much of it in there without info dumping, brilliantly done. So Deathless Beast by Andrew D. Meredith walks away with best world building of 2022. The next category I'm going to give an award to is the best middle grade or YA book that I read in 2022. I do try to read quite a bit of middle grade and uh, YA. They're both kind of good in between genres. I tend to lean honestly more toward middle grade than YA because typically YA focuses a lot on romance. So I do appreciate YA that isn't about toxic romances, but my favorite book in this category for this year was an easy walk away, and that was Eyes of the Emperor by Graham Salisbury. This book is about a young Japanese-American man who joins the army too early, he lies about his age, and right after that happens and he begins training, the Japanese bomb Pearl Harbor. And this is a story that I recommend highly to adult readers as well. It is profound. He gets, uh, the main character gets wrapped up in a government experiment. 
And it's just, man, this is an impactful book. I absolutely loved it. It was, without competition, my favorite middle grade slash YA read of the year. Going now to the award for the best Motley Crew. You guys know that Motley Crew is one of my favorite tropes to read ever. I love a Motley Crew with my whole heart. And this year's Motley Crew went to Never Die by Rob J. Hayes. Again, you've got a group of uh, war heroes that are collected to go and try to kill an emperor. Um, and they're also protecting a small boy who is their leader. And let me tell you what, this is such a great group of contrasting characters, I can't even. I loved it. I loved the interactions between all the characters. Each of the characters had their own life and vibrancy about them, and I appreciated that immensely. Next up, we have a book that made me cry. Now, this is a book that, again, I have loved the story for a really long time, and reading the book just drove that home even harder, and that is The Outsiders by Essie Hinton. <sighs> this is a motley crew, coming of age, just group of found family friends. I love this book so much. I really do. I loved it. So that one made me cry. It's not the only book that made me cry. I will give an honorable mention to uh, Snowflower and the Secret Fan by Lisa C., which I bawled in. I bawled in it. But this one, the emotions were just flowing for the entire book. All right, guys, those are my awards for 2022. And now I'm going to give an award for my read of the year. I'm not going to say that this is the best book that I read this year because I honestly don't even know how to quantify that. I don't know how y'all do it if you do the videos like that. But I am going to just give it to a book that resonated with me that I want to go back to that I can't stop thinking about and had all of the things that I love to read in it. My two nominees for this category are Never Die by Rob J. Hayes and The Outsiders by Essie Hinton. And honestly, I think I'm just going to give it to both of them because I really don't know how I would ever pick between them. And especially since I have one fantasy and one non-fantasy that just feels like the right decision. So, my reads of the year were The Outsiders by Essie Hinton and Never Die by Rob J. Hayes, both of which are Motley Crue stories. So that probably says something about me and how much I love the Motley Crue trope. But both of these books cannot recommend highly enough. If you uh, want to know more about them, definitely go check out them on go check out them on Goodreads. That sounded really excellent. Um, so. That is my kind of reads wrap up favorites awards category thing video for 2022. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know again down in the comments what you would choose for these categories from your reads of 2022. What was your read of the year? What were your favorite this, that, or the other thing? Because um, I want to hear from you as well. So. Thank you guys for hanging out with me for this video. I hope you are all having five star reads. I hope you're having a great week and I will see you in the next video.